should we change the FTX size in Yu-Gi-Oh or not? Forkfa had just recently released a video because a Master Rule 6 change is on the horizon, potentially, and it mentioned a lot of really good points. It does lean more towards the side of we definitely should. I do think a video on the scale of Farfas though does not cover every single point that could be made. Neither will mine, but I hope to bring up some points that were not mentioned in said video. Before I continue on with the discussion further, let's first talk about what Farfa had mentioned in his video and summarize it. The points Farfa had mentioned for increasing size are as follow. Increasing extra deck size can help the game progress with the thousands of cards already added since the inception of the game. An increased extra deck would give utility options to decks with very, very tight ratios in the extra deck. An increased extra deck size would make gameplay a much more defining factor as to whether a person would win or not in an individual match of Yu-Gi-Oh as compared to just, ah oh, damn, I didn't run this one singular card because I thought it wouldn't happen. Man, that sucks. And to be fair, it really does. And of course, it leaves more slots in your side deck for actual main deck cards rather than just slamming it full of cards. Points mentioned in the video that were against an increase in size is that it benefits the worst kind of decks, quote unquote, which are combo decks. And increasing deck size would also limit how important each individual decision you make in deck building is. Points that were mentioned in favor of decreasing deck size are to limit how batshit crazy extra deck shenanigans can be, to make decisions in deck building a lot more impactful, and to punish good decks, which are, well, combo decks in the current day and era. Because, I mean, let's face it, if you aren't playing combo, you're playing stun. And, I mean, it's a lot more fun to play against combo than stun, isn't it? Although that's a point that's arguable in on itself. And the points against decrease in size, as presented in the video, are as follows. That the quality of decisions you make would lower the game quality itself. Or put through my perspective, the decision of yes versus no is less on a continuous spectrum of it could be good, it could be bad, it could be in the middle, and more of a yeah, you lose, or yeah, you win, which of course isn't that fun, really. And it also leaves things more to luck, really. It's your luck whether someone decides to play that one deck that you can't out or not. A decrease in extra deck size could also mean invalidating the point of view that the extra deck is a toolbox. And also, a more important point, it would punish decks indiscriminately. Decks like Sun Avalon are punished more compared to decks like Eldritch, even though Sun Avalon isn't really as good as Eldritch. According to Farfa, the argument really boils down to gameplay or deck building. But then again, as with a lot of topics, there's a lot more points that we need to bring to light before we can really come to concession. First of all, to what extent should rules be molded to the meta? Since decks are mostly combo, including those that are meta, should we decide to mold the rules around the meta? Or should we force decks to comply to it, therefore reining them in? Should players just suck it up and use the side deck to help account for extra deck deficiencies? We're not. Because I mean, the side deck is technically a toolbox in on itself. Why limit the side deck to just main deck cards only? It's technically possible to put in an extra kit Kalos there or something. Additionally, should the viability of mid-range and combo decks be prioritized as opposed to combo decks? Or not? And finally, should decisions before the match even begins weigh on the outcome of your match or not? And right now is where I start building up on the previous points mentioned. First of all, what is fun about Yu-Gi-Oh? The things that make Yu-Gi-Oh fun itself are very touchy and also very variable depending on who you ask. Some people would argue that deck building is what takes the spotlight as to why they love the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Others would argue it's the gameplay aspect. And some would argue that it's the interaction between what happens in the game and whatnot that makes it very fun in the first place. So this opens up another question. Should we prioritize any one or two elements over the others in order to make the game of Yu-Gi-Oh more fun? And if so, what are we sacrificing from that? If we prioritize deck building over all these other factors, then we could limit how fun the actual game of Yu-Gi-Oh, the actual process of playing with our cardboard, would be. I mean, that just means that matches are decided before they're even played, and therefore, what's the point of even trying to fight for your life, huh? At the same time though, doesn't this technically mean that there's a fundamental flaw with the game of Yu-Gi-Oh and how it's designed? I mean, I'm coding MBT here, although I can't find the video for the life of me for my watch history, but Magic the Gathering, even between decks that are considered meta versus rogue, have plenty of interaction and plenty of outcomes that can decide whether the game is won or not. So really, is this an issue on Konami's gameplay perspective? Or is the concept of rebuilding this game that's decades years old a bit too much? 
Speaking of too much though, what about erratas? Games like Shadowverse use erratas rather than card quantities as a way of balancing since it leads to more variety in outcomes. I mean, at the same time, cards themselves, normally their effects, are usually what's the big problem here. See things like Zodiac, Dryden's, or Magical Scientist. Even putting Dryden's at 1 is absolutely too strong for the current metagame of Yu-Gi-Oh, at least in the TCG. And even if quantity really did prevent cards from going too hard, isn't that technically a bit of a lazy decision. I mean, at that point, you're just slapping a band-aid on it, ignoring the bad game design you've put into that card that made it a problem in the first place. Then again, though, this issue really boils down to implementation and ease of implementation. I mean, since Shadowverse is a purely online digital CCG, it's not exactly hard to change all the cards in that game and update everything to speed. Meanwhile, on Yu-Gi-Oh, there's apparently billions of cards in circulation, so it would be a bit hard to face things out. And even if then, card wow, text is so long that weird. people can't really remember the changes for long. I mean, people really, really just die when they look at a pendulum card these days. Not to mention, Shadowverse and a lot of other card games are on notation sets, so they already inherently have much less to really modify and therefore more effort, more, you know, space in their brain to accommodate what they can change in the current metagame. Meanwhile, with Yu-Gi-Oh, there's a lot that's wrong with the game. There's a lot of cards and, well, it makes that a much harder decision to make, let alone just looking at everything. It's intimidating, honestly. And even though Yu-Gi-Oh has metas, so you know which cards are actually problems or not at the time, it does mean that the slightest change of a card in the text might make something else broken unintentionally, so that errata that was made to initially nerf something like Tier Limits might actually make a variant of it just a bit too good. Of course, I'm not saying this will happen all the time, but it's very likely at some point it will happen. And finally, in this little loop about erratas, does this mean we need to imply rotation or not? Does it imply that we should rather than retraining cards or releasing new cards to support old ones, we redesign the old ones so that they can stand on their own? Do we completely remove the concept of future support or not? If we decide to prioritize more interactive and more widespread gameplay, wouldn't this accentuate the issue that Yu-Gi-Oh historically has had, the learning curve? I mean, it's already hard enough for people to get into Yu-Gi-Oh with the sheer quantity of card text. I mean, I was completely lost when I started trying to learn the game in 2020. This point obviously then leans onto the discussion of skill intensive formats like the current tier 0 format that we're in right now. And well, we already know how divisive that discussion is. And to an extent, if we try to argue along the lines that interactivity is the most important aspect of Yu-Gi-Oh, it kind of circles right back into gameplay intensity. However, in this case, instead of looking at large jungles of complex interactions and trying to manage and weave your way in between them, it's more about a breadth of game knowledge which makes the whole skill curve, learning curve, even worse than it already was. And let's not forget that both of the previous factors, interactivity and gameplay, also influence deck building. Prioritizing gameplay means that you're limiting the amount of decisions you can make that would actually lead to a favorable outcome, which is winning. And prioritizing interactivity means that it's really just a paradox of choices. When everything can really do the same thing, you can face a ton of decks and it would be a bit too hard to know what every single archetype does or every single deck type does, huh? And not to mention, decreasing the variety of cards that are actually good by increasing the skill intensity means that, well, it really exacerbates the problem of the TCG's current monetization model, which for the better or the worse is not great. I mean, seriously, 60 bucks for Perlerino? I'm not paying that much. Overall though, the video that Farfa had made really struck a chord with me. This chord then reverberated onto thinking about a lot of other aspects that he brought up in the video, at least from my perspective. To fix this decades old game is really hard and something that my wee wee brain can't really fathom, so that's exactly why I'm handing it off to you guys. What exactly do you guys prioritize or do you think as a whole we should prioritize out of the three aspects or possible more that I failed to mention? Because in my perspective we can only really hit one bird with our metaphorical stone and we'll irritate some people in the process. Anyways, that was a cool video but if you want to see some more on the low on the less IQ side then you should probably watch some of my clips. Like for example I decked out someone with Runic. Of course, people won't really like that I did, but hey, it's funny, so uh, check the video out, I guess. That's it. Laters.